Hello my Marvel fans, the trailer for the Marvels has finally landed online, the sequel to everyone's favorite Marvel movie, Captain Marvel. Oh, 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 scaring the trolls, getting them out of here before the video starts. But what I'll be doing here for you guys is giving you my trailer breakdown and reaction for the Marvel, pointing out some easter eggs you might have missed, how this could connect to the larger MCU. But this won't just be about my opinion, I definitely want to hear from you guys, okay? I know there are some rational, good, level-headed people that just aren't a fan of the Captain Marvel character, have no interest in a sequel, and it'd be nice to know if this trailer kind of swayed you, made you go, you know what, I'd be willing to check that out even though I wasn't a fan of the first one. Or if you're still like, eh, yeah, I think I'll just pass and wait for this one to hit Disney+. Plus. But okay, starting things off here, just giving you my general thoughts on the trailer alone, I actually thought it was a lot of fun. This definitely feels like a major rebrand and almost like it's not even considered a Captain Marvel sequel. Like I said, for obvious reasons, there is this chunk of internet that just hates Brie Larson. Like you alone just watching this video means you're gonna get a bunch of weird thumbnails in your description. Now just look at them, red text, Brie Larson with red eyes, probably with words like disaster, garbage, woke. I'm sorry, man, it's gonna be a fun couple of days thanks to this trailer. But I will say to my surprise, a lot of this trailer felt like they were putting Brie Larson a little bit in the background and really wanting to focus on the newer characters like Monica Rambeau and Kamala Khan. I like the Beastie Boys music they included in here. That is a rap trio and we're about to see a trio of superheroes work together intergalactically which is the title of the song but the thing that carried the trailer the farthest for me and actually got my excitement up Imani Vellani is Kamala Khan man she is hilarious in this trailer I thought her Disney Plus series was one of the most enjoyable ones probably one of the better new additions into the MCU and seeing her almost act like an audience member who got to be sucked into one of these Marvel movies fangirling out over meeting people like Nick Fury Captain Marvel and I guess to a later extent Monica Rambeau. I think it's what's going to make this movie feel a lot more fun but just getting straight into it now from the beginning of the trailer it opens up here at a space station a saber space station. If you've kept up by now we've had shield sword and now we're on to saber which looks to be the division in charge of protecting earth from space threats. Nick Fury is here with Monica Rambeau studying an anomaly in the sky that really resembles the same wall of energy we had in Westview back in one division but as soon as Monica Rambeau touches this anomaly she switches places with somebody that has a similar power to her Kamala Khan. A couple of things I want to point out in these shots for one Nick Fury is looking so different man I'm still not completely sure what the timeline is of the Marvels and Secret Invasion but the man looks very different from Secret Invasion to the way he looks here he almost looks younger. The other thing I want to point out here is right when Nick Fury is about to go inspect what happened to Monica Rambeau on his desk you can see the Captain Marvel pager that he was given in the first Cap Marvel movie and then that he used at the end of Infinity War when he was being dusted away cute little easter egg. From there we get a taste of these three characters just starting to swap places with each other where we get a call back to the ending scene from the Miss Marvel Disney Plus series. If you weren't someone who checked out the show this is the way the show ended. It was kind of a little cliffhanger. Kamala Khan is just chilling in her room reflecting over the journey she just went through and then out of nowhere Carol Danvers just appears in a room that I think looks very similar to the average Brie Larson hater. Come on you can't tell me they spam 20-30 videos of them a month and their room doesn't look like that. From there, it looks like Nick Fury and Monica Rambeau will pay a visit to Kamala Khan's house where we get reintroduced to Kamala's family. Again, one of the better parts of her Disney Plus series. Really glad they're going to play some sort of role in here. I'm also glad we're going to be staying in her Marvel Disney Plus suit, at least for a little bit in this movie. That's one of the things that sucks about those Disney Plus series. They create such awesome suits that they only end up wearing for one episode. But here it looks like she'll be wearing it for a large majority of the movie before she gets an upgrade that I consider a downgrade. But as you can see, a tussle has already ensued where they got somebody tied up, probably trying to take Kamala away. I like when we look at Kamala's shirt, she is wearing obvious Captain Marvel merchandise. And even this little moment where she switches out with Captain Marvel, I like how Brie Larson is emoting in here, so frustrated and upset. Feels like they're gonna give her more fun things to do in this movie, but probably one of my favorite parts of this trailer is just seeing Kamala's reaction to Goose being a flurkin with tentacles coming out of its mouth that had me really smiling. Oh 
From there, we get some nice action sequences of them traveling through space. I just like seeing them together. I can already tell I'm going to love the chemistry between the three. And it's not going to be easy from the beginning. We still have to remember there's this sort of hatred between Monica Rambeau and Captain Marvel. It's more of a one-sided hatred as Monica Rambeau is still going to blame Captain Marvel for leaving her mom all those years back after she dies from cancer. We got a little bit of it in WandaVision where she didn't seem to be a fan of Captain Marvel. Nobody else came close. Well, I'd argue that Captain Marvel came close. We are not talking about her. And it looks like they're going to work through their troubles here. Some great action shots of Monica Rambeau and Kamala Khan fighting off this alien army. Now here's where we get to some of the interesting things that we have heard about this movie that might sway some people going, all right, I thought this looked fine. Throw it in the garbage. There's been rumors and reports going around that there will be a sequence in the Marvels where they go to a planet and in this planet, the people there only talk in musical form, giving us an extended musical sequence in this movie. Yeah. Now, if I've learned anything from covering Joker 2, it's that the internet apparently hates musicals and they don't want to ever see them ever. Even though we just had peaches, 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 I love you. Yeah, I didn't seem to mind that musical number, did you? But even I myself really flinched when I first heard that information. I was like, that just feels so random. But I guess that just goes with the vibe of this movie. They're trying to make it more fun, more adventurous, kind of out there. You know, Marvel has really been playing things safe sometimes. This feels like the most creative that they're going to be in a while. And if you're still not convinced, this is something that actually happened in the comics. This looks to be taking inspiration from a Miss Marvel run called Beyond the Limit, where Kamala Khan returns to her hometown only to find out everyone in her home has kind of turned into a Bollywood movie and they are non-stop singing. And you can very much feel this planet is taking that Bollywood inspiration paired up with the singing. It could be kind of a fun sequence, but we'll see how it plays out. Then we got to talk about this character who's played by Park Sing John. Not much is known about him, but another rumor and report that we've heard about this this movie is that Captain Marvel, Carol Danvers, will be getting married at some point in this movie. No, please, please don't say that. The reports aren't very clear on how that'll play out, whether it's an actual marriage of someone she's in love with, because you got to remember, this whole time we're seeing all this crazy stuff happen on Earth, Captain Marvel is out in space doing her thing, saving other planets. She's got to have a life of her own, so I kind of would believe at one point she'd find a loved one and would want to get married. And I'm not sure if this is going to be the person she marries, or it's going to play out in sort of a funny plot point where they need to get a point A to point B, and in doing that, she needs to marry somebody. Again, that's just something we'll have to wait and see, but that's something to look out for here. We get a whole bunch of what looks like baby flurkins, kittens running amok. I would not be surprised to learn if Goose is somehow pregnant in this movie and she gives birth to all these little flurkin alien babies. But here in the trailers where we finally get revealed what appears to be the villain of the film that I feel is going to be the weak point for me. It looks like we're going to have the successor of Ronan step in from Guardians of the Galaxy, Ronan the Accuser. This scene Seems to be his hammer, even though I remember it being destroyed in Guardians of the Galaxy. I guess they build a new one. This villain will be taking over those Kree duties, carrying on the intergalactic Kree versus Scroll War. But it's not just that she has Ronin the Accuser's hammer. If you look at her arm, she also seems to have the other half of Kamala Khan's bangle. That's the other part of this movie I am interested in, is to learn more about this bangle, where it comes from, and if they give us a sort of origin for the movie. There was this weird hint in the Marvel series that kind of happened really fast where we got to see somehow the 10 rings were responsible for it and we do get to see a dead Kree member that had the bracelet with them and it gives this villain some abilities where they'll be able to fight Captain Marvel, Monica Rambeau, and Miss Marvel. I'm curious if they get that bangle away from her and they put it on Kamala Khan. Does that give her an upgrade in powers? Does she still get the same ones? That's what has me most curious about this movie is, you know, the explanation to that because I'm still thinking that along with the Shang-Chi she 10 rings these are all alien or future tech that might or might not be connected to kang that'll eventually lead us into kang dynasty but aside from that we get the final shot of what looks to be the newer costumes here and out of the three i'm just gonna say it monica rambeau has the best looking costume i can't wait to get the funko pop of that and add her here i don't entirely mind captain marvel's new suit here i wish it was a little bit more colorful but it looks okay not a fan of the new miss marvel suit i don't really like what they did with it but 
it's Marvel, right? The next time we see her, it's gonna be completely different. I just think her first suit was way better than this one. Ending it off here with what I think is gonna be the most creative part of this movie. The way they can swap in and out of each other's body when they use their powers. We get a shot here of the villain throwing off a little blast at Kamala, where when she activates her own powers, she switches places and it becomes Monica Rambeau there, having Kamala Khan pop up on the other side. This is just a little taste of those action sequences, and I feel like when the three of them learn to kind of use that to their advantage, it's going to be a lot more fun. And that's not even taking into account how visually pleasing that's going to feel a lot of the times on screen. So yeah, to me, the Marvels looks like a lot of fun. Is it my most anticipated Marvel movie? No. But I am more excited for this movie than I thought I ever would be for a Captain Marvel sequel. Because again, I still think the first Captain Marvel movie is so overhated for just being a fine Marvel film. But what they've managed to turn around and do here with the Marvels, oh! I want to see that. This looks like fun. This is where I throw it off to you guys, though. What do you think about the Marvel's trailer? Are there any Easter eggs you caught that I might have missed? Theories and predictions? What's holding you back from wanting to see this movie? Or what has you the most excited? Anything and everything, be sure and like, subscribe. Follow me on Twitter at 3C Films or on TikTok at 3C Films. But as always, I'm Chris. Take care.